Good morning, Milwaukee. Bobby Tanzillo here from onmilwaukee.com. I am in Wauwatosa, in Hoyt Park. And I'm standing here on the western edge of Hoyt Park where the uh, car park entrance is. And I'm going to turn this around as usual. The Swan Boulevard. It's the Hoyt Park sign that's looking to the county grounds. Looking north. And here we are at the Menominee River, which is the reason we're here. Beautiful 1939 bridge. So Hoyt Park, named for uh, Emerson D. Hoyt, who was the first village president and then the first mayor of Wauwatosa when it became a city. And I wrote a little bit about him when I wrote about the bespectacled building on Harwood Avenue, which uh, was built on land that he owned. Um, I'm walking east into the park here. Could you see the river before? Should we go down here so you can see the river a little bit? It's moving at a decent clip today. You can kind of see it through the trees right there. It's the bridge. It's the river through there. And there's these trails you can walk. Um, I'm going to take up here, though, because you got a better view up here. So Emerson D. Hoyt. That's who the park is named after, first mayor, first village president of Tosa. Um, and the park, long before it was a park, this river was a popular swimming hole for Tosans, even in the 19th century. So it goes back well over 100 years. And um, by the late 20s, there was a sort of a swimming hole that had been created here with sand on the bottom. And uh, every year the Tosa Fire Department would come fill it up with water. And that was replaced in the early 30s with a, a more substantial pool. And then the pool that most people remember was built in uh, the late 30s. And that lasted until 2003 was when it closed, and it had fallen into pretty bad disrepair at that point. Um, then it was closed for a while, and in 2006, a group got together, started raising money, built the new pool, which we will see. You can see it in the distance there, but we'll see it closer up, um, which opened in 2011. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The park here, so then the park... They started to acquire land, the Parks Commission started to acquire land for the park in the mid-20s as part of uh, Charles Whitnell's progressive uh, movement plan to build the parkway system around the city for green space. And this was part of the Upper Menominee River parkway system, which also includes um, the parkway where um, Hartung Park is that I went to a couple of weeks ago. There's a playground there. This is a popular picnic spot when the weather gets better. It's a playground, also very popular. What's the matter, Deborah? The picture is a mess? What does that mean? Is it breaking up? Are you not getting good reception? I hope it's okay. Let me know, folks. Kendra Robinson, nice to see you. Thanks for watching, Andrea. Okay, so mid-20s. Parks Commission starts buying up land, which they did for about 10 years. Um, assembling the acreage for this park and the, the parkway. And um, they built Hoyt Park. And we're going to head over this way so you can see the pool. I'm also trying to avoid people because I'm mad. to the folks who raised the money, the Friends of Hoyt Park Pool, who really made it happen. You can see Sand Volleyball Pit over there, and all along that area there. Oh, good. Deborah, I'm glad to see it's better. Um, thanks for watching. 
I know you're a regular and I'm happy to have you here each week. Um, so after the, the pool opened in 2011, the uh, Landing Beer Garden opened in 2013. And then the Grand Hall, which is probably closed and we can't go into, but I have written about the Grand Hall um, in a story with lots of photos, and some of you might remember the Grand Hall. Um, go back this way. Uh, which was built in the late 30s. At the same time, that bridge, when we first opened, you saw that uh, stone bridge. That stone bridge, the suspension bridge, we'll see in a few minutes. Uh, the pool uh, and whatever stone reta retaining walls you see in the park were all built in the late 30s um, by the WPA, it's Prince Civilian Conservation Corps. Here is the uh, where you enter the pool. It's their office up there. So and there is the Grand Hall, which was built in the 30s at the same time uh, as part of the entrance to the pool. And it is a stunning, stunning arts and crafts space, um, which was itself renovated in 2015, I believe, 2015-16. And uh, before the pandemic was happening, they were showing Packers games in there and that sort of thing. So it was open to the public and it's pretty great. Um, a lot of people remember that space when it had originally been a, like a public meeting space, event space, but then it became the basket room, which was where when um, in the old days you would enter the pool through here and then you would go into the basket room, which was a room that had all these wooden shelves filled with wire baskets where you would put your clothes after you changed uh, into your swimming costume, <laughs> as they might have, they probably didn't call it that anymore. Maybe they did, I don't know. Um, so a lot of people remember that as the basket room. Um, in the basement of the building, there's still tons of the baskets which survive. Um, and also in the basement are um, impromptu murals that were painted by the teams of uh, lifeguards and other often high school student um, in summer employees here over the years. So that's pretty awesome. You can see that in my story as well, which I think Carolyn will probably share here. Um, and there she is, just like clockwork. Isn't she the best? Here's the concession stand. Not open now, as you can see. This pool is also not open. But they're in there working on the pool, getting it ready. This, of course, as we just sort of walked through and I was talking about other stuff, but this is normally, once the beer garden season starts coming soon. This will all be picnic tables with umbrellas um, for the beer garden. That's the stage over there because there is live music. And this is a fabulous beer garden. If you haven't been to this beer garden, it is really a fun one. A lot of activity because of the people using the pool, people hanging out, listening to music, drinking beer, eating ginormous pretzels. Kids then love to come play over either on the playground or they play over here on the grass. And of course, down there again is the river. There is the one unhappy camper. I don't know if you can hear him in the background or her. There's a little peek at the suspension bridge that we talked about. So if we come this way, we'll actually cross the suspension bridge, which is, I believe, a popular place to have wedding photos taken. I've occasionally had to dodge happy couples on my daily run or bike ride in the summer. I try to always stay out of the frame. So this is a beautiful suspension bridge. I don't know if you've seen this. Land stone, land and stone probably quarried nearby at Hartung Park when it was the quarry. Definitely looks like it. And the wood has that railroad creosote smell. And if you've ever ridden across this bridge on a bike, you know the fun sound this makes. Going over here, there's that smell. Oh, the river seems to have slowed down by the time it gets here. There were rocks back there, which was, we're giving it some life. Oh, it's got some, some life a little further down that way too. And if you were to follow this down, this would take you right into Tosa Village. It would pass right by um, Cafe Hollander, the little red store, all that stuff, and heads east, then bends a bit and ends up in 
the Menominee Valley that runs along the south end of downtown to meet up with the Milwaukee and the KK Rivers at the gathering place of the waters. Hey Joe, nice to see you. Karen, thanks for joining us. Good morning. So then here we go now. I think we're not really technically in the park anymore. I mean, I always think of this as Hoyt Park, but I don't think this is technically the park anymore. I think this is the park way. Though if you want to call it Hoyt Park, I'd go ahead because I do. Again, beautiful park. At this point, it's, it, it varies in wideness here between the course of the river to the right and the road over there to the left. So in some spots, it's wide enough to have soccer pitches and uh, you can see a net down there in the distance. Um, there will be youth soccer games down here in season. Yeah, there's two fields right there. There's a great one across across the street there on the parkway too that's kind of tucked into an almost little opening in a wooded area that's super fun for the kids to play and they feel like they're playing in a secret field. So if you were to follow this all the way down this would take you into Tosa Village. We won't go the whole way. Sure, what there is for I've walked the paths along the river on the other side. I'm not sure what there is for paths along this side, but this looks like one. So let's peek in, see what we find, shall we? I'm sure there's kids who grew up in Tosa that know every inch of this, but I've only known it as an adult. So I'm thinking of someone like Paul Hoffman, if he's watching he's from Indiana, he'll know this stuff in and out. Some of these um, Menominee River Parkway trails along the river, you've got to be really careful. This obviously is not one of them with this giant log <laughs> fallen tree in front of the path, but some of them are heavily trafficked by mountain bikers and joggers. So you really got to be careful you don't get taken out. Or if you're one of those people, you got to be careful you don't take someone out. I usually run on the concrete It's not great for my knees, but I also don't trip that way on this kind of terrain. There's a great view. See, I'm learning with you guys. I've never been in here. Some of you actually probably know this way better than I do. There's the roaring rapids of the Menominee River. You can see another land and stone wall over there. And then on that side, you're looking at the county grounds, basically the north end of the county grounds. And I can see it, but you probably can't through the trees. If, if you look just over there, like I said, you, you might not be able to see it, but from here I can see it. The roofs of what used to be the agricultural school, what people call the Eschweiler buildings uh, for a long time, because they were designed by Alexander Eschweiler, um, and which were mostly replaced with the Echelon Development. Oh, there it is, the Echelon Development. Just peeking over the top. So we're looking sort of slightly southwest from here. And uh, you can perhaps hear it or see it, but there are quite a few people out. We'll see people with kids walking and strolling. The last time I came through these wooded paths along the river, I was on that side of the river. It was, it was with the dog and a friend of mine. Oh my God, gnats, midges. Um, <laughs> and I very unwisely went with my sneakers after a snowstorm. This must have been January or I guess January, February maybe. Very unwise. Two steps in, my feet were soaking wet and freezing cold. But we're not having that problem now. It's a beautiful day out here. 
I'm not sure if it's supposed to hold. I was just listening to my friend Marcus do set on 88.9 on the way over here. And he said it's supposed to get cloudy today. But it's not cloudy now. It's not insanely warm, but it's not cold either. It just feels a little brisk after that beautiful, beautiful weather we had last week. I wasn't here to enjoy it. I was in Kansas City enjoying it. But um, you'll read about that soon enough out of Milwaukee. Um, but I know you guys had the same weather I did. And it was amazing. So often on these paths, you can encounter a little bit of wildlife. Raccoons, squirrels, chipmunks, the occasional rabbit, lots of birds. But you probably have to be more quiet than I do yet. See, here's some of these retaining walls that were built by the Civilian Conservation Corps all along the river here. And just up above, you can see, I don't know if you can see behind that, there's a bit of a rise. That's a track bed, railroad track. Trains go through there pretty often. Anyway, you see how this is going. I'm enjoying this. I don't know if you're enjoying this, but Hey Tony, hey John, thanks for watching. Sandy, thanks for joining us. I'm on sort of the tail end of a walk through Hoyt Park, although now I'm in the Mon I'm some of these nature trails in the Menominee River Parkway. Just seeing where they lead me. As I said, I've never walked the trails on this side before of the river only on the other side of the river. But I think we're headed back to the, head back to the path. Probably say goodbye soon. Hi, Georgia, Mary, thanks for joining us. I hope you're gonna get out this weekend and enjoy the weather. Again, it's probably not gonna be as beautiful as it was a week ago, but or a week and a half ago, but it's pretty beautiful. Yeah, family biking. So here we are, we're back on the path. I'm headed back towards uh, Hoyt Park, headed west. Here we're at the soccer pitches that we had seen before from the other side. Anyway, a lot of the beer gardens are open already. The beer garden guide is up right now out on Milwaukee. If you're comfortable, they're outside. You can be distanced. Enjoy a beer, but be around other people. But not too around other people. And enjoy this beautiful weather. And if you can, come down to Hoyt Park. Enjoy beautiful Hoyt Park. Enjoy this great uh, this great parkway system that uh, we owe a debt of gratitude to socialist Charles B. Whitnell for making this a reality all over the city, in the different parkways. Again, these date to, they all really started in 1923. There was a report that really was the foundation of the parkway system. And a lot of this land was then bought up in the years after that. Again, specifically here from 1926 to 36, they created the uh, parkway and Hoyt Park, built the pool in the late 30s, the east, well the pool that was here until 2003, built in the late 30s along with a beautiful suspension bridge, which I'm just going to keep yakking until we get back to. Hi Diane! So you can see it, so I can say goodbye from that bridge. Um, so that bridge and the bridge over the river at Swan Boulevard, the pool, the Grand Hall, the stone retaining walls, all of that stuff built in the late 30s. And have been a major feature of life in Wauwatosa ever since. 
Then the new pool opened in 2011, the beer garden 2013. The Grand Hall was renovated and restored in 2015. And that basically brings us up to date. That's the park you see today. Hoyt Park, named for Emerson D. Hoyt, the first mayor, and before that, the first village president of Wauwatosa. Thanks for joining me. We're back at the bridge, the beautiful bridge. And I'm gonna say goodbye, say be safe, and we will see you next week. If you have suggestions of where you want to see me go, Post them as a comment here or send me an email, bobby at onmilwaukee.com, and I will take it under advisement. Thanks for joining us, Cassie, Matthew, everybody else. See you soon.